if you have a child in our ministry, <laughs> extraordinary. Our kids are growing in incredible faith. And if you've been on a mission trip, Fawson takes um, people from our church all over the nation and or all over the country or world, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And it's been amazing. But this morning I've asked him to come and share with us today what God has put on his heart on this idea of expansion. Will you please put your hands together for our kids and mission pastor, Fawson Malu. Too kind, too kind. Hey, what's going on? I am super pumped to be here. I got my leather jacket on so y'all can see me. That's a black joke, just so you know. But I'm so excited to be here this morning. Thank you, Pastor Ryan, for this opportunity to just preach the gospel. My wife and I just find it such a great honor to lead your kids. It really is a privilege for us and our team to every Sunday go before your kids and tell them about Jesus. There's nothing like declaring the word of God to a group of young people who are just discovering life. It is priceless to watch their eyes go, what? God could do that? That last week we spoke about how God wants to speak to them. And you should have seen their eyes go wide. And when we prayed, we asked God, hey, could you take a moment and just hear God? And the response was amazing. One kid told me that he saw a picture. I was like, okay, now you're taking it to the next level. I just wanted you to hear a voice, but you saw a picture, and the picture they saw was nails and a hammer and a wall. And they said, I feel like God is telling me I need to build his church. Dang. What a privilege that is for us. That's what we are experiencing every single week as we minister to your kids. So it's not a chore for us. It is a privilege for us. Such a privilege. Hey, I am super excited to bring the word of God, and God has a word for you. You know, in the new year, just before we crossed over in uh, uh, 2019, a bunch of us hang out. We went out, and I call party. We went to dinner. Then we ended up at uh, an arcade to play ping pong and stuff. And as the night proceeded, we ended up at uh, Ryan and Cross's house around a campfire. And as we were sitting, waiting for 12 o'clock to come, and I'm just done. I'm not as young as I used to be. I can't do it. Like, I'm just done. I'm done. And so Joy turns to us and says, hey, guys, I want to hear everybody's New Year's resolutions. And I'm like, that is the last thing I want to talk about. I just want to wait for it to click in, kiss my wife, and let's go home and sleep. But Joy insists, I really want to hear what God has to say for y'all. So she starts, and she says, man, in 2019, I want to see God just moving incredible. I feel like we're moving into a new season, and God wants me to lean into that. And I'm like, dang, that's a good 12 o'clock? You, you got that for 12 o'clock? The next person goes in, and he's like, man, I just feel like God is calling me to dig deeper into the word. I want to be a scholar in the word of God. And I'm like, wow, we're getting really spiritual. And he goes, next person, next person. And I'm like, I got nothing. I got nothing spiritual. And so they come to me and say, Foster, what do you want to see God do in 2019? And I say, in 2019, my resolution is I want to look good and feel good. <laughs> That's what I want. And Joy was so upset. She said, Foster, you're like the man of faith in our group. Like, come up with something more spiritual. And I said, hey, there's nothing wrong with this statement. I want to read the word of God looking good. I want to praise Jesus feeling good. I want to declare the word of God looking good and feeling good. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It was up until I started reading the word of God in Matthew 6, verse 25. The Bible says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Have you ever read a verse of scripture and you feel like God's just really talking to you? It says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and your body more than life, than clothes. And just for one second, I think, oh, snap. My New Year's resolution just got squashed. But as I was reading further, now this is the text that we go to. Matthew 6, 31, the Bible says in the New King James Version, it says, Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. The word Gentile there means unbelievers seek after it too. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Jesus says, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Would you pray with me? Father, I just want to thank you this morning for this opportunity to bring your word to your people. I don't boast to be the brightest or the best communicator, but I am so privileged to be here. I ask that you would use me, God, and may this word just feed us this morning, God, and may it yield some great fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen. amen. Last week, Pastor Malouf brought an amazing message. I believe it was one of his best preaching uh, statements. It just blew my mind away. He, he talked about how God in 2019, he felt that it is a year for us to expand. And he spoke from Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3, and the Bible says in that passage of Scripture that God wants us to enlarge our tents. And he spoke about how God desires for us to create capacity so that people can come into our lives. And that could be hard sometimes. You know, I don't know if you're like me. We have an amazing e-group. I like our e-group. It's taken a minute to get used to my e-group uh, uh, members. I love that they understand me and I understand them. We have a thing going. I love where I get to sit in church because the light hits me right and I get to see the word of the pastor clearly. I don't have to sit behind a tall guy. I love it. I love where I get to park because I get here at 7 o'clock. So I choose where I want to park in the morning. So when Pastor Malouf starts to preach that we need to expand our tents, it means I might need to change that. Because when more people come in, guess what? I can't choose where I sit. I'll just have to pick a seat that's available. That means my group has to expand because we need to accommodate more people. But this is necessary for the expansion of the kingdom of God. It may be uncomfortable, but it is extremely necessary. Now, I will tell you, last year in 2018, Maloof uh, declared that 2018 is a year of increase. And what I heard was, 2018, my bank account will increase. I'm here to tell you that didn't happen. In fact... Uh, we got pregnant, and um, I was like, Lord, that was not the inc increment I was looking for. I wanted my bank account to increase. Now, this is taking money from my bank account. <laughs> then 2019, he stood up last week, and he says, this is a year to expand. And again, went before the Lord. Father, increase my bank, expand my bank account. But to be honest, I don't think God is just talking about Joking aside, I believe that God is saying that in 2019, he wants to expand something in us so he can expand something through us. Amen. So let's go back to our text in verse 33. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. Notice that Jesus is not negating your dreams. He's not saying you shouldn't desire to be the best in your, in your company. He's not saying that your dreams are not valid. He's not saying that your ambition and your desire to thrive in life is not valid. What he's saying is that you need to prioritize my kingdom first. Then all these other things will be added to you. So. I love to study words. Pastor Chad has been so gracious to teach me how to do that in the Word of God. And so certain words jump at me. And when we read this passage of Scripture, excuse me, the word seek means to pursue, to study, to explore, to understand, to learn, and to consider. So Jesus is saying, my kingdom must be pursued, my kingdom must be studied, my kingdom must be understood, and my kingdom needs to be learned. Second thing in this verse of scripture we see is as Jesus says, my kingdom has to be first. Another way to say the word kingdom is just simply saying king's domain. Seek first the king's domain. That needs to be our highest priority. Third thing from this verse of scripture, we see that Jesus says, I need you to seek my righteousness as well. Now the word righteousness means right standing with God. Another word for it is condition acceptable to God. And we know through the verses of Scripture that the way we get right with God is by receiving Jesus into our hearts. That's the only condition that is acceptable.
to God to receive righteousness. So when you receive Jesus, you receive his righteousness. Now this morning, I want to dwell on the word kingdom. Now I understand kingdom is a little bit like a weird word because we live in a democracy. In fact, America was built on a revolution against a kingdom. But it is key to notice that Jesus talks about the kingdom a lot. In fact, in Matthew alone, the book of Matthew, Jesus talks so much about the kingdom, it's alarming. Here are some, some, some verses of scriptures that he talks about. In Matthew 4, verse 17, the Bible says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, change your mind, for the kingdom of heaven has arrived. In Matthew 4, verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 5, 3 to 4, this is a Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. In Matthew 6, 9 to 10, this is the Lord's Prayer. Jesus says, pray this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Matthew 12, 28, but if I drive out demons from, by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Matthew 13, 11, he replied, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. And he keeps going and going. The more you read Matthew, you realize, man, Jesus was really preoccupied with this word kingdom of God. In fact, some would argue this was his whole message, that he was here to introduce us to a kingdom that was God's. Now, the word kingdom in the Greek is translated basileia, which translates domain, sovereign rule, and royal power. So how does God's kingdom relate to you and I in this year that God has spoken over this house that this is the year to expand? How does it relate? I personally believe the word expand was God's original idea. And we see this in Genesis 1.1. The Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens, and the earth. Now, it is key to understand that in the kingdom, two things have to always happen. Number one, there has to be a king or a queen. Number two, there has to be territory. Now, each one needs the other. You can't be a king without a territory because then you're just Michael Jackson, the king of pop. <laughs> Number two, if, you, if, there's, no ter if there's, there's territory and no king, there's chaos. Both of them need to exist. And, G and God establishes this one word in the beginning of the letter of the Bible. He says, in the beginning, I created the heavens and I created the earth. And by virtue of creation, that makes him Lord over all. He is king of heaven and he is king of earth. So let me stop there for a second and just tell you a little bit about my king. God is a good king. And certain aspects of Bob being a king just illuminate how gracious and how good our God is. One thing, one attribute of a king is the king's word is law. Whatever he says becomes law. If he decrees it, it's final. Nobody can argue it. No one can debate it. It's not like a, a democracy where people can argue it and then it's tossed out or put in. When a, key, when a king speaks it, it's done. This is important because Jesus said, heaven and earth, that will pass. But my word, my word will stand forever. Second thing to, to, uh, to notice about an attribute of the king is that a king's word is weighted. The weight of the word depends on the size of his territory. For example, the queen of England, when she says something, it carries weight in the world. But the king of Jordan, his country is small. So his weight, yeah, it carries some weight, but not as hefty as the one of the queen. But we know right now, we've just declared that Jesus God is king over all. So whatever he says is more powerful than any person in the planet. And let me encourage you, church. Let me tell you a story of how great this word of God is. The Bible tells us in the book of creation, in Genesis 1 verse 3. I love the story of creation. The Bible says the world was void. It was full of darkness. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. He said he called one day the morning day, and he called the night night. The second day, he says, let the heavens separate, and he called it skies. He looked at him and said, man, this is good. Third day, he says, let the earth rise up and let vegetation be filled. Looks at it, says, man, I like what I see. The fourth day, 
He says, let there be the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, let me ask you. Day one, he said, let there be light. What has been lightened the world for the last three days? Because the sun, the moon, and the stars were created on the fourth day. Church, I am here to tell you the word of God is so powerful that just by the virtue of the fact that he said it, it lit the earth for three days, waiting for the sun, the moon, and the stars to be created. Man, I am here to tell you that word is powerful. And don't get me started to explain how, what God talks about you. The Bible tells us that God, when he looks at you, he says, you are a beautiful creation. That's the word of God. He tells us that he has a great plan for your life, a plan to prosper you, to give you hope in the future. That whenever you feel like, man, I don't think my world is going right, God is saying, no, my word stands. The Bible tells us that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. So I don't under, So whenever you feel like you have something going on with your body, declare the word of God because it holds within itself great power. And if God is for you, the Bible tells us who dares to be against you. Second attribute that I just find fascinating about a king is that a king, wherever he goes, he brings the government with himself. Because you see, a king is sovereign doesn't need outside forces to speak into whatever decision he makes. So by virtue of the fact that the king is there, the, good, the kingdom is there. This is key for us, church. You see, in this 21 days of prayer and fasting, the Bible in Matthew 18, verse 19, and I'll read this. It says, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in their midst. What God is saying when two of you agree concerning anything, because of the virtue that the king is present, whatever you and them agree, it is agreed upon in heaven. This is key for us. This is such great power for you and I. This tells me that I don't have to accept certain circumstances that happens in my life. That as long as I take another believer and the two of us agree concerning anything and because God is present, then it is agreed here on earth and it is agreed there in heaven. When we look at the world that we live in right now, we do not have to settle for whatever it is that the kingdom of this world has decreed and declared. I am here to tell you that the king of kings tells us that the power that you need is between you and I. That we just need to get together and when we declare and decree something, it is done here on earth and it is done in heaven as long as it is the will of the Father. Now this is passionate to me. So a few days ago, my wife and I were coming into agreement. I needed God to do a miracle. I had teeth issues. I went to Africa. My dad says, hey, I got a, a guy who can fix your teeth. I said, how much does it cost? This is just a few hundred dollars. You can do it. I was like, all right, let's get it fixed. Needless to say, that was a mistake. Uh, he ruined my teeth. And it hurt so bad, I couldn't even chew from this one side. So I turned to my wife and I said, we need to pray. I need God to either heal me or I need God to provide a way for my teeth to get fixed. So I'm talking to my friend and I'm telling him, hey, listen, man, my teeth are in bad shape. He was like, man, you need to go see my dentist. He said, usually my dentist, if somebody cancels, they're willing to just take anybody and just clean their teeth for free. You should just go see him, let him clean your teeth, and maybe y'all can come up with a plan to see how he can take care of your teeth. So I said, man, sure. So I go into this dentist's office with faith, believing that my wife and I have just agreed. Either God, you heal me, or God, somebody just fixes it. So I meet the dentist. He looks at my teeth, and they're bad. Like, we're in bad shape. And he looks at me and says, Faustin, this is what we're going to do. You're going to come here on a Friday when nobody's in the office. And you and I are going to take time and fix all your teeth for no charge. <laughs> Church, there is power in agreement. Is it no wonder that the enemy is attacking our families? Is it no wonder the enemy tries to bring strife between brother and brother in the house of God? Because he understands when you and I come together and agree concerning something, heaven stands at attention and says, yes, I agree too. And then we believe and it happens. There's power in agreement. Our king is a powerful king. Now back, back to the expansion plan. The Bible tells us in Genesis 1 verse 26. God is now revealing his plan to expand his kingdom. 
Bible says in verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the earth and over every living thing that moves on the earth. In this one statement, God paints his picture. He says he creates human beings who look just like him. He places them in the earth, and he lets them rule. He says, I will rule from heaven, and you will rule in earth. Now, there's a term in kingdom life that says, that's the, that, that, that describes what this is. The word is colonization. Now, I know we're in the 21st century, and this word colonization is kind of, uh, that's, that's not a cool word. But this word is key to understand how the kingdom of God works. The word colonization is, comes from the root word colon. From the top, it just means attachment. Something leads from the top to the bottom. Now, God is saying, I want to rule in heaven, but I want my extension to extend in the earth through my sons and my daughters. But this is very profound. You see, I come from a country. My, I, I was born and raised in Kenya, as most of you may know. And in Kenya, we were colonized by the British Empire. And in 1895, the British came into Kenya, and they took over Kenya. They defeated our forces, and they took over Kenya. And their plan for expansion was that everything in Kenya would look, feel, and run like the headquarters, which was uh, the British Empire. And so that's what happened. For years, we started to dress like the British. We started to speak like the British. We started to act and, and be like the British. But it wasn't until 1964 when Kenya received its independence. And years later, after the British had already left, the effects of the colonization still goes on until today. The British drive on the left, in Kenya, we drive on the left. At 4 o'clock, the British drink tea and biscuits. Uh, in Kenya, my whole life, at 4 o'clock, we sat down and we drank tea and biscuits. The British love to wear suits and a tie to every occasion. Guess what? In the hot heat in Kenya, Everybody wears a suit and a tie because that's the effect that we grew up in. This is key, though. You see, I believe God's desire is that his kingdom will colonize the earth. And the reason why colonization happened and they did it this way was so that when the queen left England and came to Kenya, she felt like she was still at home. And I believe this morning when God came to our church this morning, and he found a group of people praising Jesus and worshiping him and declaring how great he is. He felt like he was just at home. And that when he comes to our home and he sees a home praying and believing and trusting God and decreeing the things of God, he feels as though he is still home. And this morning I am here to tell you God's plan is that you and I will change whatever environment we walk into and make it feel like it's though it is home for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here at Expression Church, we love to say that everything starts with a relationship. And we also love to say that everywhere you go, make it better. I believe the way we make it better is that whenever we walk into a situation, we change it. That's expansion. That's how God desires you and I to expand his kingdom. Now, there's a verse in the Bible in Matthew 10, verse 6 and 7, just really brings this home for us. The Message Bible says, go to the lost, confused people right here in your neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Raise the dead. Touch the untouchables. Kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. Church, that is kingdom living. When you and I make the kingdom of God our priority, its impact becomes a reality. When we step into what God is calling us to do in 2019, the kingdom on earth, heaven on earth, becomes a reality. 
So this morning, you may be here wondering, what is my next step? What does this expansion thing look like in my own life? Because remember, God's desire is that he would expand something in you so he can expand something through you. What does that look like? What is God asking me to expand? It could be he needs you to expand in the area of love. He needs you to love more. Maybe he needs you to expand in an area where you're just worshiping Jesus everywhere you go. Man, you just turn the radio on and you just worship Jesus in your car. Everywhere you go, you're just speaking the word of God consistently. It could be that he desires for you to expand in the area of stepping out boldly and declaring the word of God to somebody. The testimony I just spoke about how God used a doctor to plan, to, 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 to work on my teeth, fear of church. You know what that does to my family? It increases faith. And it gives me a testimony. And everywhere I go, I tell of this testimony of how God showed up when I prayed. And when I tell it to other people, something begins to happen in their heart. Because they're like, man, I want that. There's something in my life that I need something to happen. And that's how the kingdom expands. God wants to do something in you. So when you come out and declare his goodness and his mercy, man, you're telling something that just happened to you. That's irrefutable. Nobody can argue with your testimony. It just happened to you. And that's how God expands his kingdom. This morning, I want us all to stand. You may be in here and you're like, man, Boston, it sounds great when you talk about this kingdom and how the king is amazing and how what the king could do. I want to turn, I want to use a different word for kingdom this morning. I want to use the word family. God invites you to his family. When Jesus comes into your heart, you join a family of God. And this family of God expands vast throughout the earth. That everywhere you go, you should walk into an area where the family of God is and you feel welcome. Here at Expression Church, we, we pray and we search and we desire to create a culture. When you walk through those doors, you feel like you belong to a family. And if you feel like you, you don't know if you could fit in, I'm just here to tell you, you do fit in. As Pastor Maloof so eloquently said, we're not here to judge you. We're here to reflect the goodness of God. We're here to tell you how God shows up in our weeks.